Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida met with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau today, making it the first visit by an Asian head of government since the launch of Canada's Indo-Pacific strategy. While several topics were on the agenda, China's aggression in the Indo-Pacific region appeared to be on the top of mind for Japan's leader. For Japan and Canada, and China is a central challenge. That is my awareness. And uh, with regard to various issues regarding uh, China, that uh, we would closely liaise and uh, coordinate. There are areas which we need to work with China, but there are other areas in which we're going to have to compete with China, and other areas in which we're going to have to directly contest China whether it's on human rights, whether it's on respect for international rules and the rules-based order. Kanji Yamanochi is Japan's ambassador to Canada. He joins me now. Ambassador, thanks so much for coming. We Thank you very time. much for having me here. I, I'd like to start with the issue of China that the Prime mm. Minister raised. His visit comes mm. at a time when China and North Korea, they're building up their military capacity, expanding mm. their missile mm -hmm. capacity. Your country is building up your military spending. Mm. In that context, does Japan feel supported by its allies like Canada and the United States? Yes, um, that, that's absolutely right. When we see the world today, geopolitical situation, we see the one thing, that is the, there are certain unilateral attempts, unilateral attempts to change status quo mm -hmm. by utilizing force. And that should not be accepted. It's never accepted, acceptable. Then the Prime Minister Kishida just mentioned when we see the world and we see Ukraine, what's happening in Ukraine. And also, if you see South China Sea and East China Sea, we see many attempts to change status quo by using force or by using uh, intimidation of the force. So now the time for the Prime Minister Kishida just mentioned to have the uh, cooperation with like-minded countries and allies mm -hmm. like uh, Canada. Your Prime Minister warned uh, very recently that today it's Ukraine, tomorrow it could be East Asia. Yes. Is he speaking primarily there about a country like Taiwan, or is he speaking more broadly about Japan? Well, he just mentioned what happening in Ukraine could be could happen anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. But we are located in uh, in the Far East. Then we take a look at the around. We see North Korea. Mm -hmm. Last year alone, the North Korea conducted more than 30 times missile testing they launched more than 50 missiles. So that is a political, uh, geopolitical situation down there. And when we see China, we, we saw them increasing their defense spending very rapidly, but no transparency. We don't know why they are doing. And also when we, we, we see the certain sort of military uh, cooperation between China and Russia in, near, in our sort of area, that is very, very uh, source, of the, uh, source of the concerns. Canada has been accused of not really being a reliable partner in the Indo-Pacific region I for a lot of that. years. No, no, not, I'm not saying you're <laughs> saying it, but, but in response to that, they've mm -hmm. launched their new Indo-Pacific strategy. Mm -hmm. So given that context that you've just laid out of China, Russia, North Korea, and those challenges mm -hmm. that are there, are you satisfied with the new path that Canada is plotting in the region? I think so. We saw the uh, uh, Canadian uh, Indo-Pacific strategy first time in its history. Mm -hmm. And I know that in the process, there's so, mu so much discussion and deliberation. But after the final con uh, product of the Canadian Indo-Pacific strategy, the Japanese government welcomed it. And coincidentally, the Japanese government also issued its uh, national security strategy December. And if you remember, Foreign Minister Jury paid official visit to Tokyo October. Then Japanese Foreign Minister Hayashi and Canadian Foreign Minister Jory uh, jointly issued what we call action plan contributing to free and open Indo-Pacific, which contains six priority areas like uh, peacekeeping, rule of law, global warming, and also critical minerals. So there are so many things uh, Canada and Japan work together in that context. Well, uh, one of the things that you want to work together on is liquid natural gas. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, your country is in a similar situation that Germany found itself in, mm -hmm. relying on Russia mm -hmm. very heavily for energy supplies. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear a lot of new things on the LNG front from the prime ministers today. I mean, where are we on that? I mean, can, is Canada close to being able to being a source of natural yes. gas for Japan? Yes. I mean, are you this satisfied? Air Energy Canada 
is a very, very important undertaking, and which took place a couple of years ago. At the inauguration ceremony, Prime Minister Trudeau came, in, came mm -hmm. and he mentioned this Air Energy Canada is one of the largest private investment in the history of Canada. And this is game changer. And also, I've been hearing that sometime in the middle of 1920s, Hopefully, around 1925, everything will, if everything goes well. 2025, you mean? 2025. Right, okay. 20, 2025. Well, I'm hoping that before the end of 2024, but yeah, this uh, project is steadily going on. Because people, so, people criticize Canada for being too slow on this and not being able to help Germany in its current situation and, mm -hmm. and not really being, at this point, able to right away start shipping things to Japan. But you're not one of those critics? Uh, it's very easy to criticize anything, but mm -hmm. we know what's happening. And we know all those participants are working so hard to make this happen. And th this is also involved with the uh, First Nations, and we need the uh, understanding and support of them. So they are working so hard. But I think I've heard that the things are moving steadily forward. Right. So, so your country has assumed the leadership of the G7 for this year. Mm -hmm. And the prime minister is, is traveling to the other G7 capitals to sort of take the temperature and talk mm -hmm. to the other mm -hmm. leaders. He was at NATO in Spain, which is, you know, the, uh, Japan yes. is not in the North Atlantic. Yes. But he was from Hiroshima, understands well the, the consequences of, of war. I mean, what is his diplomatic hope from this tour he's doing of the other G7 capitals? And I think the, uh, the G7, the seven member countries hosting each year, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the Japanese president, presidency is the only G7 summit held in Asia. Right. And this time he chose venue, Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. That means a lot. And also, if we see the world today, previous years G7, we didn't, we didn't have the uh, uh, Ukraine yet. Right. So now we see, say, a pandemic, Ukraine, and many attempts to change the status quo by using force. So now the time for G7 countries come together, to work together, to, to make sure that the international order based upon rule of law is so critical. And that is so important thing. So Prime Minister Kishida is telling to all those, uh, this time he visited five countries, right. namely France, Italy, UK, Canada, and now he's, by, by this time he'll be in the United States, but talking these things. So this is so critical. And I, I think Prime Minister Kishida is doing a great job. I, I was at the last G7 in Isehima in Japan mm -hmm. in 2016, oh. and the agenda was much simpler then than it is now, yeah. right? It was, it was a very different world. So, I mean, what, what do you hope uh, your country can achieve during its presidency of the G7, that when that final communique is done, what oh, do you think the big achievement will be? The, the up to the December, Germany was a president. Mm -hmm. So this January, in the very two, second week, so we have just started. But Prime Minister Kishida sees a two, two points of view for the G7 uh, summit meeting. One is the solidarity and the unity of G7 countries, right. especially for the importance of the international order based upon rule of law and free and open in the Pacific. That is more like the unity of so, uh, G7 countries. Right. But at the same time, the world is consists of more than 190 countries. So the Prime Minister Kishida is very uh, uh, sure that uh, he has to work together with other G7 countries to uh, talk with global south, so to speak. Right. We need to understand and support of other countries in Asia, Africa, Middle East, and Europe. So I think that would be the very, very important part. And of course, and also uh, uh, think this way. And after the pandemic, after the Ukraine, so many countries uh, suffered of the uh, food, energy, right. supply chain. The we the G7 countries are very, in a sense, rich and blessed. So we are the country who need to help those countries in need. And the Global South, it's kind of very important part. So therefore, I, I would think the Prime Minister Kishida would talk about the development assistance and also food, st food security right. and energy security and also supply chain resilience. And that is something we can do for the sake of the Global South. Okay. Ambassador, it was great to meet you. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you very much. Thank you.